Welcome to Hudson Valley Knits. I'm Amy, also known as Memers on Ravelry and Memers66 on Instagram and Twitter. Welcome. This is episode 16. Today is March. I don't Thursday, Friday, 14th, 15th, 16th, March 16th, Sunday, March 16th, I think. <laughs> I don't know for sure. Uh, and I'm calling this whipping it good because I've got lots of whips to show. Well, at least for me, it's a lot of whips because I don't usually do a lot of different projects. So let's get right into it. I um, just want to give a couple of brief reminders. We have, um, I am donating a prize towards a, uh, like a fundraiser f that the Fibertown podcast is doing. Um, for the ASPCA, I would ask you to go to her group for all the details, but I am giving a friendly reminder here because, um, Emily is donating a $25, um, Etsy gift card, and I am donating towards this, a, um, skein of Lorna's Laces Soulmate in the Rainbow Colorway, and, um, they are almost to their goal. So let's say you donate $5, that gives you five chances to win. And then every $5 above that, you get another chance. So go over to Emily's um, group and check that out. Um, it's a great cause. So that's one thing. And then the other thing I wanted to talk to you about um, is to briefly mention my senior love along. It's a year long um, knit along. Sorry guys. Um, and what it's for is I plan to, at the end of the year, distribute washcloths, hand knit, crocheted, woven washcloths, whatever you want, um, to seniors living in homes in my area. So, um, I am asking people to hold on to them till we get closer to the end of the year, uh, just because I don't have place to store it. And, um, I will be collecting them towards the end of the year and hopefully um, you can all, I'll document the distribution of them so you can all see it and I think it's going to be a wonderful thing and bring a little bit of happiness into people's lives. So that's the other thing. The third thing I want to mention and um, it's a new, I don't want to call it a knit along because really there's only a few weeks left to participate in this, but I wanted to mention something that I thought was a great cause. There is a group on Ravelry. It's called um, the Boston Marathon Scarf Project. And um, I, I want you to know that I'm just going from memory, but you should really go to their group to get all the specifics and details. But there is a church where the runners go, and I guess this is a tradition, before the marathon to get a blessing. And it's, um, the church has decided in memory of the tragedy that occurred last year, um, they are knitting scarves and they want to knit a scarf for every runner. And they would like to hand it out the day of the marathon. And it's... It's a very big and serious um, drive they have going, and they're asking for help from the knitting community. There's um, information on the church website. Um, they are accepting scarves, any scarves, but they are asking that they be blue and yellow, which are the official colors of the Boston uh, Marathon. So that's what I'm doing. And, um, yeah, so any scarf... Um, they're asking for blue and yellow. They're asking for about five feet long and they're asking, um, for about six inches wide. But really, I think they're, you know, from what I've read in, um, the group and on the website, they'll take, they are appreciative of any donation. And, um, yeah, I mean, I even saw them say they would accept cowls. They'd prefer scarves, but you know, everything will be gener uh, graciously received. So what I am doing as well, because I really was um, thought that this was a beautiful tribute and a wonderful way of um, displaying 
um, our thoughts for the community in Boston and everyone that was affected is I am going to open up a thread in my group and if you can whip out a scarf and post a finished object picture of it in that thread before April 1st, before and including April 1st, their deadline is April 6th. So I'm making mine April 1st because you have to mail it to them. Um, I will draw up a winner for a free pattern of your choice, $10 or less. So um, now uh, I'll, I'll talk about what I'm making in the whips, but it can be done. I know it's short notice, but it can be done. And I'm limiting it to one per person because you know what? The fact is some of us have more time to knit than others. And I just want, and because it's such last minute notice, I just want people to have kind of a, an equal, kind of a more of an equal chance to win. So, and I'll, like I said, I'll talk to you about what I'm putting together um, when we get to the whips. So those are just like the three basic announcements. Um, so let's talk about whips. Um, I'm knitting a scarf. So this is what I decided to do. Obviously it's mid-March. I have a lot of projects going on that I want to get done. So I decided to, I also wanted to make something in a uh, washable fabric. I didn't want to do wool because some people might be very sensitive to wool. And so I decided to go to Joann's and use some wonderful coupons. And I got two of each. I got two skeins of this Fort Worth blue. Okay. And this is a um, Lion Brand Hometown USA um, brand yarn. It is 100% um, acrylic. It's very soft, very lovely. Um, 81 yarns per skein. And it is like a uh, super bulky, it's called. Which I got, obviously, because I knew I had to knit it up quick. And here's two skeins of the yellow I got, which is called... Daytona lemon and it's a um, it's a, I would call it like a calm yellow it's not in your face bright and since the the blue I basically all I was really trying to do is match the colors up and they have examples of the colors unfortunately I couldn't really get anything I wanted to get I would have liked to have get a little closer to the marathon Boston Marathon blue but I I didn't find anything in in my local um, Joanne fabrics that really match but um, really in a couple of hours I would say well I think I spend a total of three or four hours on this I got this much done I definitely will finish this in time I'm doing like a kind of like a stripey zigzaggy pattern I've done this uh, pattern before it's free on Ravelry you know what let me get the name of it I didn't think to do that Hold on now. It's a great, uh, it's a great free pattern. Um, the a lot of the ladies in my local knitting meetup group are doing it. One of them did um, all um, garter straight back and forth, but she kind of staggered the colors with different thicknesses of stripe, and it made a very pretty look. And then another woman, she did um, again, she did more of like a block work. Uh, pattern so there's but there's lots of suggestions in the marathon scarf scarf project um, group so I, I really recommend you go check it out they list a lot of free patterns that you can pick from and um, like I said this is um, just a few hours work and we have still um, a little over two weeks so I said go for it and the name of this pattern this free pattern is Drum roll, it's here somewhere, it is <laughs> down at the bottom, I guess. I knit it once before, and that's why I, oh, here it is. Multi-directional diagonal scarf by Karen Balmer, and I'll uh, link it in the show notes, and uh, it's a great idea. Um, it's a little finicky, like you will have to cut and um, do your striping to get all the right side together. But if you wanted to do it solid, that would probably look good too. So that's one of my whips. I put my whips behind me. 
see them. Okay, so here is... I told you last podcast I wanted to um, cast on the um, Collie Wobble Socks by Emily of Fiber Town. And I did, and I'm really enjoying it. And this is using... Um, um, oops, dropped my needle. This is using the um, Desert Vista Dye Works um, variegated yarn and uh, Cottage Garden. Isn't it gorgeous? I'm almost done. I'm, I'm doing the toes right now. I did the Fish Lips Kiss Heel for the first time. I bought this when it first came out and I keep meaning to try it and I loved it. Guys, it, it's a great heel and it, um, it was so much easier than doing a heel flap, I really have to say. And I tried it on and I love the way it fits. So I'm a big fan of the Fish Lips heel, uh, Kiss Heel and I will probably make this my go-to heel because it really is just that simple and um, easy. Um, and it's also basically, if you want to take it as far as you can go, the whole thing is basically a, a recipe for a great fitting sock. But anyway, this is my um, Kali Wobbles, again, by Emily from the Fiber Town Podcast. It's her pattern. It's a great pattern, well written. It looks great. I brought it upstate to my mom's house this weekend, and all my nieces are, and, and stuff are up there, and they all want to learn how to knit because they love this sock. Um, the sock is for the Suck It to Winter Knit Along, um, from the, uh, Sassy Pants, um, uh, Knits podcast with Silly Fru, and I doubt I'm going to finish the second sock by the end of the month. I'm going to try, but it's still for her, because screw you, winter. <laughs> I'm so sick of winter, and, um, really, really loving the Fish Lips Kiss Heel, loving this yarn, loving this pattern so this is is a real joy this this sock pattern and i think that this is a great pattern for variegated yarn just gives a little interest it's not and it just oh, i don't know i just love it i really i really like it it's simple to knit you can memorize it i memorized it after a few repeats that you can figure it out just by looking at it you can uh you don't have to mark where you are because you'll figure it out and this is in my Tangerine Designs monkey bag. And that's my only pair of socks on the needles. I can't wait to start another one. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, I love socks. I love knitting socks. So let's put my pattern back in there, even though I really don't need it now. But Now, I have to say that with, with this um, sock, she calls for, I think, 64 stitches, but I liked knitting with a size smaller needle, and I added stitches thinking it would be big enough for me, and I had to actually increase it a little more because uh, it was a little snug. So watch your gauge on that, and just make sure you have a good gauge that's going to fit, um, and that it's not too snug, okay? Excuse me. Pick up my needle. Next on the needles, I kind of got, after talking to you guys last time, I mentioned that I want to do a Fair Isle knit along, and that will be my next big knit along where I'll actually have a prize giveaway. I'm debating, I have some, I have some great yarn in my stash that would be great for a Fair Isle giveaway. And I'll get to that later in a later episode. But it'll probably either be some of my Jameson DK yarn. Or I have some yarn that would be excellent for Fair Isle that's from um, New Zealand. And I can't, the name escapes me off the top of my head. But I got Jonesen for some stranded knitting. So I cast on this um, pattern by um, Kate Davies, an amazing designer. Um, it is called the, shoot, I had to make a copy of it. She includes like a very nicely printed cardboard version in her kits, but I can't fold that up and put that in my bag. So it's the, t I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but the Toti Hati um, 
pattern and it's basically a um a cozy for a, a little hot water bottle which is included in the kit i don't have it down here with me but it's about this wide and a little taller but this is the color matter and what's the white called hold on let me get them out matter is the orangey red color and it, it it's i think it's more orange than red and the white is called fluga white and it's a creamy off-white it's it's beautiful i love this yarn um i've never never knit with jameson and smith i've only knit with jameson um but it's really great uh as you would expect calls for two 25 gram skeins they come in the kit the um hot water bottle comes and you get this really nice bag from kate davies um i love her designs she is such an amazing writer and designer and i'm all about the historical knitting so i mean this is the only one i bought as a kit um but i have bought some of the other patterns and um i definitely want to knit them up and i'll go over that with you in um new to the queue and um i'm not going to post about the fair isle knit along this week i'll have to hash out in my mind what i think the details will be but the next podcast, I promise, will I'll um, have sp specifics for the um, Fair Isle Knit Along. So you might want to start thinking about what you might make. All right, in the meantime. So again, on the needle and made significant progress is my Event Horizon Shawl by Donna Draconis. Here it is. It's getting really huge and hard to really... Um, display well but what you can see is where's my little marker here it is so here's um the last time i showed this to you i was where that marker is and here i am now i almost finished the first repeat of the next circle and i was just transitioning the last time but you can also see that i've done the first color transition now this is made out of um Caper sock yarn from, oh uh, shoot, it's escaping me. Let me go to my project page so I can give you all the right details. It's Caper sock yarn from String Theory Yarn. She um, dyed up kits especially for this shawl. I'm so tempted to buy another one, the red, the red one, for, the, for a red one for myself. Because like I said, this is going to be for my Aunt Janet in North Carolina. She doesn't know it yet. And I don't, I highly doubt she's watching this. She probably doesn't even know I do a podcast. And I want to have this done by Easter so I can give it to her as a present. I've never knit anything special for her yet. And um, I love knitting special things for special people. But aren't the colors beautiful? Um, so this is going to be um, my priority knitting because like I said I want to get it done and I know looking at the pattern I have to finish this and do it one more time and then um, I have another edging and then the border so basically this is my the, the pattern calls for four skeins of sock yarn this is my second skein I still have a, quite a bit left of this and then two more after that so I still have quite a bit of knitting, so I really have to make this a priority. And normally, I, lately I've just been knitting it like if I'm at my desk and I keep the pattern on my Knit Companion app, which is so wonderful. I love that app. And um, But I think it's going to travel with me more. Excuse me. So, um, yeah, it's definitely getting more attention. I switch to this bag because it fits in here better now that it's getting bigger it wasn't really fitting in my joanna spring bag well enough now pretty soon it won't fit in this bag either but if i could get one of amy bass Aaron weight sweater bags um excuse me hello then maybe i could fit it in one of her bags but i never seen either they're just not the the print i'm kind of i'm not feeling it with the print or i just don't get it in time so what else have we got? Yes. So, uh, 
before I show you this, let me show you my finished objects. So this is kind of a special whip. I, show, I showed you last week, but I'll show you my spinning whip. I did show you this last week as well. I'm almost done with two ounces, uh, one ounce, sorry. And I have another ounce that I'm going to spin on my Bosworth spindle, which I have ready to go. And then I'll apply these together. Yeah, so the, the another two ounces is going to go on the Bosworth. And then I'll apply these together, and then I have another two ounces that I'll, I'll spin up the same way. Um, so this is um, uh, uh, Unwind Yarn, Paul Worth's. Um, it's a BFL. See, I don't have it in its original bag. I got it's four ounces, and um, the colorway is I don't remember. Dang it, I don't remember what the colorway is, but I'm really loving spinning this up. I have to say, though, um, the spindle is getting pretty weighty, so I don't know. I've got almost an ounce on here, and it's getting to wobble around a lot and it's not spinning consistently. Another thing with the spindles is I really had to practice um, joining fiber better because it's always very noticeable where I'm joining and I'd like to be able to keep that a little more um, smooth. But you know, practice, practice and loving it while I practice is all good, right? Alright, so um, one finished object, and then some purchases, and then I'll talk about some nitty talk, and I got three really cool things to talk about. Finished objects. Finally, I got these done. These are, and I'm going to say it right this time, Krakatoa socks. Um, they are by Amelia. Uh, let me see what Amelia's last name is. Pappy Put. Oh, Pappy Put is her Ravelry name. And Amelia Put is her real name. Now, I don't know if she's going to publish these on Ravelry, unfortunately. And um, she says she doesn't know how. And I did notice she's not very active on Ravelry. Um, but which is a shame because these this is a really nice pattern and again you can see all the details now in her pattern she called for the lace design to go all the way down the heel flap but I, I changed it because I don't want to wear it out so here they are now you've seen them so now I can wear them I um, blocked them out of my sock blockers to make them nice and smooth and flat and get that um, lace pattern out but really really beautiful socks and I think I'm going to save these for when I go to mat classes because when I go to like Pilates class I like to wear pretty uh, hand knit socks um, so yeah I really enjoyed this and I really hope Amelia does get this published on Ravelry because I would recommend it it's a great pattern and uh, she did a pretty good job for her first handwritten pattern hand done pattern. All right, so some acquisitions. So I guess I'll start with um, my friend called me and said, um, Sandy called me, so you know Sandy. My friend Sandy called and she said, Lori found a knitting machine. She found an Addy knitting machine at a estate sale. Someone's mother had passed away and they were selling her stuff and oh my god, it was a treasure trove of crafty goodness in that woman's house. Oh my god. I I went the week after my friend Lori went and found the Addy knitting machine. I don't know how much she paid for it, but I know she got a good deal and she's really enjoying it. But um uh, Sandy went the following week and she and she asked me to go and I'm like nope 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 I don't need any more yarn I'm not going I don't want to buy any more yarn and she said okay no problem and then she called when she got there she said Amy you have to come out here <laughs> I was like oh she's like no Amy you have to come out here I've already put aside a couple of things for you so I went out there and let me tell you something. There was one bedroom just full 
of yarn and I posted a picture on Instagram I guess I'll post it here too and um, needles she had a um, serger uh, a, a, a computerized embroidery machine uh, another knitting machine that was like five feet long um, hundreds of needles hundreds of needles and crochet hooks and beads like these tall draw things full of beads galore um, and bins filled with yarn every kind you could think and her daughter-in-law was there and she said well all the good stuff went last week and I'm like all the good stuff how much yarn did she have she said a lot so I did buy just a little bit of stuff one of the things actually the woman was really sweet she she told me to just take this was I bought this Rowan just baby book and I think it's because when I saw it, I picked it up to, and I said, oh, I can't wait until I have grandchildren. I said, I'm going to have to get this because there's great patterns in here for timeless. There are. There are timeless patterns in here. And, yeah, I mean, my kids aren't even married, but I'm already thinking of baby stuff. So what can I say? They, uh, my, my son's eligible. If any of you are looking. So, I mean, really, um, so I found that the patterns in this particular book were interesting yet timeless, right? Simple and interesting and timeless, which is exactly what I'm looking for because, uh, you know, I don't really know when my grandchildren, if I do have any, so, you know, um, I love this baby blanket in here. It's really simple. Um, so yeah, she said, oh, I just want you to have it because my mother-in-law bought this in, um, for her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren, but even when they came, her hands were so arthritic, she couldn't knit anymore, so it never got used, and she said it would make her very happy if you just took it. So I got that, and then I got, um, some sock yarn. Let me show you. So I got two of each because they're 50 gram balls of Regia. And it's a blue. Uh, I don't know if it has a color name here. Let's see one. So she charged me two dollars for a ball of any yarn in the in the room. It didn't matter what kind of yarn it was. So she only charged two dollars. So I got one of these, I figured, for making heels, and then I got two of these. This color is oh, Mary Maxim. I've never heard of this brand. This is a Made in Turkey. Desert Sky is the name. Okay, Super Wash Wool and Nylon. And I got two of these. Here's the other one. So, I got a couple of pairs of socks worth, which is cool. And then the only other thing I grabbed was, how many skeins are there? I think there's like six skeins. She had a ton of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. Lots of it. And I actually grabbed a lot of it from my friend Mary Jean because she asked me to scap up some stuff for her. And um, But I just grabbed this Hunter Green mostly because I like using Wool of the Andes for knitting baby sweaters. Like outdoor baby sweaters, you know, like a jacket baby sweater. So there was enough here for one nice size baby sweater. And I want to make one for a friend of mine. So that's what I got. That's it. And go overboard. I did also buy some fiber. So if you watch the What You're Swatching podcast, she is having a giveaway and offering a coupon code. For um, free free waters farm fibers, and it's hand painted yarn and spinning fiber, and I just love the colors. So that I use the coupon code, which basically it covers the shipping, but that's still that's great. Um, it's the winter sunset colorway. 
It's 85% polar and 15% tussa silk top. And I just love these colors. I love the orange and purple together. And then she's got flashes of fuchsia and almost like a, a gray purple, like a misty purple. But these are gorgeous colors, gorgeous. And uh, I, don't, I don't have too much spinning fiber yet. So there's room for a little spinning fiber and I'm just loving my spinning. So I got that and I bought another one. So this is another gorgeous colors. Um, the colorway is called Complimentary Conversation. It's 100% Falkland wool top. And I love this blue with a little splash of purple, but I love the orange, the tangerine orange and something a little bit of like an olive blue and just loved it. Loved it, loved it. It is about four ounces, I'm guessing. Four ounces, yeah. And um, this might be next on the uh, Hanson Mini Spinner. I don't think I've knit any fall, uh, spun any Falkland yet, but I'm not sure. I don't remember. So anyway, um, I do have one more acquisition that I did not purchase, but was gifted to me. And I thought it was, I was very kind of touched. Um, so Craftsy, I got in the mail from Craftsy a thank you card. And I don't know how many others of you got this, but I got a card It's saying um, that they're my biggest fans and they want to thank me for being um, one of their best members, meaning I have um, involved in almost, I would say, two-thirds of all their knitting classes. I'm enrolled in, plus their spinning and um, a couple of photography ones. So I'm sure they're enjoying my business. So they sent me this really nice bag. It's a crafty bag and I have, I intend to use this for projects. It's really nicely sturdy made and I just thought that was a really, really wonderful gesture. So thank you so much Crafty. That was really nice and I feel appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nobody else sends me free stuff just because I buy hundreds of dollars worth of stuff from them. Nitpicks, you should. Certainly giving you a lot of my money. Only kidding. You do whatever you want. Um, other thing is, okay, so let's segue into Nitty Talk. I don't think I have anything else to show you, but I do have a lot to talk about. So let's talk about first. Um... Did you see the new botanical knits that came out? Oh my gosh, I want to knit everything. So this is not a review. This is just really quickly wanted to say what's new in the queue is just about everything in that book um, because it's awesome. Um, she's such a, a wonderful designer. Her, th I love designs that are simple yet unique. And she does both of those. So she keeps, they're really simple, but then they have these really unique touches. And um, it's just great, great. And her books are so beautifully put together. They're not just uh, patterns slapped together and called an ebook. Um, they're, it's a book and it's lovely. And her parents' are, patterns are well written and I'm a big fan of her. So I encourage you to check it out. Next up is my own pattern. So today I was, uh, this past weekend, I was upstate New York. We were all up there celebrating my father's birthday and I um, took the opportunity, I reblocked my Against the Current shawl and I brought it upstate with me to take some pictures while we were up there because they live right along the east branch of the Delaware River in upstate New York, right uh, across the river is Pennsylvania, and it's beautiful up there. My sister lives, her property is adjacent to the water and right near a, a um, train track that was 
uh, bridge that's from the 1800s. So we use that as kind of like a backdrop and I got some really, really nice pictures. My daughter modeled and um, even took some pictures of me wearing it. And um, the pattern has been tech edited. I've had two of the test knitters, actually three of the test knitters have reported back um, with their comments and suggestions. And um, the only thing it, I've been putting off because my sample knitter I think I mentioned this before. I gave her skin a yarn, and a, and um, you know we ag agreed on some things um, for her to create a sample. But she has been through some unforeseen events, very inconvenient, stressful <laughs> events in her life right now, and for a very good reason has been unable to start. Um, knitting what I was hoping would be a sample of the smaller version of the shawl and I was you know at first she's like oh Amy I'm so sorry you know is there a deadline please let me know and I told her no because originally I'm like you know what I'm not I don't have a deadline other than I just want to get it out there um, <clears throat> But I decided to just go ahead and do it without that. Because I don't want to, you know, rush her. But at the same time, I don't want to wait, like, another month for to take pictures. And that's the only thing that's missing, really, is some really more professional pictures. So now that I have them, my daughter is going to um, touch them up, you know, crisp them out and, and adjust the, color, uh, the lighting and stuff. And then I'm going to put my pattern together. And um, by the next podcast, it should be live on Ravelry for download. So, and I'll probably have some nice discounts for my Hudson Valley Knit Watchers if you're interested. So, if you do like this and you like knitting, knitting lace shawls, there will be a one or two skein um, version of the pattern. And it should be available in the next week or two. And I'm very excited. Um, it's against the current shawl, and uh, like I said, it should be up in the next week or two, and there will be some special discounts for my podcast watchers. All right, um, and along that lines, I am also working on the next pattern, which I think I'm almost ready to um, write up, and um, it is called the... Um, Guardian of Air shawl. Now, if you look at my project page, and I've worn it before, I have knit one years ago. Basically, I just kind of uh, started knitting, and, and it came out. I, I don't know how to describe it, but um, this time I'm, I basically am writing a well-designed pattern for it, and here's just a little sample of what it's going to look like. Now, I was watching other podcasts where they were talking about how they're afraid to show their whips. Um, for their designs because people will copy them and my uh, my thoughts on that are if someone can figure this out and copy it um, I still have my original up in my project page and it's been there for years and um, I can definitely show that this is my original idea and also <clears throat> If they did, I would still publish my pattern and I would leave it to the integrity of my viewers, you know, not to buy something that was copied. But really, you know, I think it, this is not something you could easily just whip out. <clears throat> that being said, um, this is going to be the next pattern I publish. It's uh, going to be a beautiful shawl. And I am knitting this with Lost City Knits um, yarn. It, okay. <clears throat> My throat is getting really dry. It's her Twin Canyon Fingering Yarn. It's 50% merino and 50% silk. <clears throat> and it comes in 500 yard skeins, 113 grams. And Cerellos uh, colorway, which is a blue. And Silver Bells, which is this silver here. So it's going to be a, a rather large shawl. And it's going to require two skeins. And that is my next pattern and my other whip on the needles. Now I intend on, I'm going to be looking for test knitters for this one too. 
Um, and fairly soon, I think within the next week or two, I'll have a pattern written up that you can, <clears throat> that can be test knit from. So if you are interested, please let me know. And I will, um, uh, get in touch with you with more details when it's ready to be test knit. Okay. So just get in touch with me at Ravelry. So, um, this kind of segues again into the, my next topic which is what I'm going to be doing this coming weekend. I am taking a writing workshop in Vermont with Donna Dracunis. Um, she is um, a very, you, I, you sh, um, if you haven't heard of her, she's uh, taught three craftsy classes on knitting socks. She ha writes historical knitting books. Uh, she's written the Stories and Stitches books where I've gotten my um, Event Horizon shawl pattern is written by her and she is having um, this workshop up in her um, um, studio in Vermont and um, she's going to go uh, over creative knitting and pattern writing uh, pa I can't talk creative writing and a more technical pattern writing lessons and uh, I'm really really excited so I've been in touch with the other participants via emails and whatnot and I know it's gonna be a really great weekend and I just can't wait so I will have more for you on that but hopefully this will get um, tech edited and written up as a result of that class so that's about all I have for you. I know that my next one will be chock full of uh, information and details for you about how my writing workshop goes. So stay tuned for that. And check my Ravelry group for a thread about the scarves, Marathon scar uh, Boston Marathon scarves. Check it out. And have a great couple of weeks. I'll see you soon.